There is nothing more satisfying than taking something in your brain and then making it playable. Game dev combines a bunch of different mediums and when it works well, it feels like magic. And sometimes it feels like standing at the bottom of Mount Everest. But you're not alone. And that's where I come in. By the end of this video, I plan to help you have a clear path forward on how to make a game, on how to make your game, and how to use popular industry tools. Let's set you up for success on your game development journey. So where do we start? Probably with a critical key question. Why are you making games? Is this just for fun or are you planning to make a portfolio so that you can have a career in game development? Or do you want to make the next Skyrim? Either way, you should write down your goal in your vision on a piece of paper or a fancy little note app. All right, I'm gonna wait until you go get your notebook. And I mean it, go get your notebook. Without a goal post, how do you know where to aim? If you don't set a goal or only have a rough idea of where you're going, it's kind of like aimlessly wandering through the forest. Wouldn't you rather have a party of epic adventures ready to set out on a quest and conquer the almighty dragon? It sounds a lot more interesting and fun, right? <laughs> Now before you set off on your adventure and choose your party mates, I need you to do one thing. Okay, maybe a few things, but first, decide on the type of game you're making. You first have to choose 2D or 3D. You can technically do some crazy, really cool in-between stuff, but starting with 2D and 3D is gonna be great because there's enough things we're gonna have to learn. And sometimes your art choice even depends on the type of game you're making, which we'll talk about next. But back to choosing what kind of art, 3D modeling involves, well, 3D modeling or finding a bunch of 3D assets online that you can download and use. A 2D game would require somebody who's able to draw or access to being able to use assets or 2D images or what's known as sprites. But please check the TOS of wherever you're getting these from to make sure that you have the correct permissions and rights to be able to use these, especially if you plan on selling your game. Now with the different types of games, there are so many different ones. There's action, adventure, platformers, shooters, survival, RPGs, and MMORPGs. The list goes on and on. Most of the games you're seeing in this video, you can find and play for free on our platform Viveverse. Here is a big list or table of all of your options. Well, probably not all of your options, but a good place start. You can pause the video or screenshot this for later. You also want to choose a perspective to represent your game. There are games like isometric, top down, side view, and again all kinds of mixes out there. And now think about how 2D or 3D could fit the type of game style that you're going for first. Do some research on the game you're wanting to create if you're a solo developer and gather what kind of perspective are they using and what kind of art style they're using and what kind of similarities do you want in your game versus what do you want different. When starting out in game development, a very common piece of advice is to start with a small scope. A scope is how big your project is. Will it take a few days? Will it take weeks, months, years, your entire life, and your entire grandchildren's life, and their entire grandchildren's life, and it becomes like a whole pass down your game thing? If you're new, starting with a small project is a really good idea. And I'm the first to admit that I had a lot of resistance when I first heard this concept. I was like, ain't no way. I already have some skills, like I can draw, I know a little bit about music, I kind of really know nothing about programming, but doesn't matter because my art's there so like I can make a cool game I want to make my dream game but with a dream game usually comes a lot of time and a really big scope which means you'll probably have a really hard time getting it done but the power of small games really allows you to figure out little small skills you might need for a bigger dream game so while we will get to that dream game one day starting with a very small game is a really fantastic idea to learn skills and see if this is something you even want to do long term now once you figured out why you're creating and you have a general direction in mind, now you get to figure out who's in your party. And this is where you get to choose what kind of team you want. You could be a solo developer and carry all of the weight on your shoulders, but then you're basically going to be like a mage that also has to do bard things. You know how you spread all your stuff out really thin if you've ever played like Dungeons and Dragons and you're just not really like super strong at anything? This is something that could happen here, but not for everybody because some people are literally just insanely good at everything. <laughs> However, being a solo developer means you can download assets online, like on the Unity store, itch.io, Sketchfab, and plenty of other places across the internet. And that can be a huge help, but again, it can limit you depending on the terms of use that the creator allows you to have with that work. So ask yourself, do you enjoy taking on lots of new skills and torturing yourself? Be a solo developer. Or maybe you actually are really skilled at a ton of these things, which already would make you a really strong solo dev. And I'm one of those crazy people that does it all. 
but I've also worked on really great teams before. Maybe you choose three to five people to be on your team, so just a few people are doing a few different things at once. Maybe one person does both the music and the art, and another person does the programming and the voice acting. Distributing the workload really will take a lot of weight off of your shoulders, and ultimately you'll get things done way faster so that your grandkids' grandkids don't have to be working on your project. I'm literally probably going to be one of those people. <laughs> Sorry, future grandkids. <laughs> so how do you support these extra teammates? You could get volunteers, or you could also get funding for your game to be able to pay and support your team. A really awesome way that you can get funding right now is by applying to the Viverse Creator Program, where you fill out a ton of information for an application, including things like your game scope, your team size, and a few more elements, and you have the possibility of getting your project funded. And we already have several creators, both solo and small teams, doing this. And of course, you can also have a super big mega team where you're like leading an army of people, but that can get pretty hectic. And something to really think about when considering all this, again, is your goals. If you want a career in games, do you want to work as a solo developer selling your work with an indie team or with a AAA studio that makes games like League of Legends, Halo, or so many more? This will be critical information so that you understand what kinds of skills you need to grow and develop moving forward. And a really cool tool that developers use is called a game design document. This is where you keep track of all the important stuff in your game. You can even break it down into small sections like characters, environment, props, different parts that people can go to. So then your team is literally on the same page with what kind of idea you're trying to bring into fruition. And now it's time to choose your game engine. Certain engines do work better for certain types of ideas as well as the specific art style you might end up going with. For example, Unity is a great all-rounder and it can do both 2D and 3D, whereas Unreal Engine is really a powerhouse for 3D. And again, this is gonna circle us back to that main goal and point, which is why do you wanna make a game? And the reason I ask this is because if you wanna work at a studio, chances are you'll wanna get familiar with the game engine that they use so that you can make your skills proficient in that area. But if you're a solo developer, then you can use whatever helps you get the job done and brings your vision to life. And something else that's incredibly important to think about before choosing your engine is how much documentation does this engine have? For example, Unity has a ton of solid documentation, YouTube videos, forums, Reddit posts, things that you can pretty much find a lot of information on if you get stuck. And when it comes to programming tutorials, you can find a lot out there for Unity. I personally just started using C Sharp, which is the programming language for Unity, and wow, it has been a journey. But it's been really fun and super rewarding. I'm honestly really glad that I'm learning it. You can also take easier routes like using a tool like Cursor, which is AI programming. And this could be helpful if you want to focus more on showcasing your art for a portfolio rather than learning a whole new skill like programming. Programming. But something to keep in mind is that AI tools of any kind can really only take you so far. The best thing you can do is use a large variety of tools, learn the fundamentals so that you can use it as something that can help you rather than something you have to solely rely on. You can also learn something like visual scripting, which Unreal Engine uses, which could be great for people who are more visual, and I believe Unity has a version of this as well. And depending on the engine you use, you will be using a specific programming language. How I mentioned I'm using C Sharp for Unity, you'll be using a different programming language depending on the engine. So make sure you Google search that and look up what programming language does my, whatever your engine is, uses. And then after that, you're off to uh, tutorial land to learn programming. Have a good time. You can also find Discord communities out there that can help you answer very specific problems that you have. In fact, we actually have a Discord where you can type in like the exact problem or thing you're struggling with in like the forum section and you'll get answers and help from people, which is awesome. And community can really help save you in times of need, especially when it's like 4 a.m. and you are stuck on a line of code and you're literally screaming internally. It's kind of like casting a spell or like bringing in allies from the outside of your party to come in and like take a look with their binoculars and like figure out what the problem is. It's awesome. Game development is hard, but it is so worth the time and the energy that you put into it. Let's talk about art. 3D, 2D, 2.5D, pixel art. If you want to specialize in art, good luck. You're on your own. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to leave you alone in this scary world. It's again, something that's really difficult but super worth it once you put in the time. I've been drawing for eight years now and I'm so thankful to this day. It's If I never started drawing, I don't even know how, I don't even know what kind of life I'd be living because it has brought so much amazingness to my life and it's literally applied in all areas of life as well. So if you're second guessing learning art, don't because it's 
wonderful. So you can take the path of learning your own, or again, you can download assets off the Unity store, Sketchfab, Itch, and so forth. A tool that we have that's super useful for quick mockups and design without having to hop into an engine, very user-friendly, is Viverse Create. You can build your world super quickly and actually upload stuff directly from Sketchfab and add them in. So if you need to visualize your world quickly, consider using that. If you decide to take the route of 3D art, Blender is a free and easy to use tool. Again, open source and has so much learning material out there things to be able to help you. If you want to get more into industry tools, Maya is a good choice, but that can get super expensive. And this brings us back to that key question once more. What is your goal? Because if you want to work in industry, you will probably want to use an engine that they're using at that studio. But if you're an independent developer, if you have a tool that gets the job done, that's great. And I know some studios are fine with you using your own tool as well. But remember, that can limit you from the help that you can get depending on what other people are using in the studio and so forth. So if you want to work at a studio, figure out what the 2D or 3D artists use depending on the game art and type that you're making. And if you're a solo dev, honestly, just choose things that are free, have a ton of documentation, and are recommended by people. For 2D art, I like to use Photoshop. It is an industry standard. And as I said, I've been doing art for eight years, so I kind of got that baked into me early on. So I have absolutely sold my soul to Adobe. I don't recommend it unless you already have it. Otherwise, free programs like Krita are really great to use. And some people like GIMP. I'm not a big GIMP fan, so sorry, GIMP. For pixel art, a sprite. I think that's how you say it. I'm not 100% sure. It's great though for pixel art. It's the king, it's the queen of pixel art, and it's definitely something that's easier to start with over other types of art forms when it comes to 2D. Other types you can look into is raster art, which is what I like to do. And then there's vector art, which is another good one if you're a newer creator, which I use Adobe Illustrator for that one. And that one's pretty easy because it's literally just like connecting and moving lines around. You don't really have to draw. It's more about making shapes. And pixel art is also more about making shapes, which is usually easier for beginner levels to approach. Some people even use traditional art. There's actually a game that I absolutely love called Moon Hunters. And for the main gameplay, it's pixel art. But then when you talk to the characters or have a dialogue going on, it's watercolor with ink, I believe. And it looks really cool. It helps make the game stand out. It's unique. And it has this kind of warm and cozy feeling. So there are a lot of elements when it comes to art. There's UI UX, which is how you navigate the menus, getting around all these different pieces. There's animation, there's props, there's environment there's characters, there's creatures, again, like, good luck. No, but you could really break it down simply. You can make like a circular creature, right? You can really break these things down into simpler and less time consuming. But this is why big teams exist, because remember, doing everything yourself, it's gonna take 10 times as long and be way more difficult. And some people thrive like that. I'm one of those crazy people. Make sure to collect inspiration and references and even look at some games that you enjoy playing if you wanna make something similar to it and take notes about what they use, like the game engine, the art type, what perspective it is, all that good stuff. So then you can decide where you want to go with yours. And you can also use AI art to help spark ideas or concepts. But as I mentioned earlier, remember to use a variety of tools. AI art can never replace the human soul or touch that you're able to put into your own work. And if you're looking for games that can give you inspiration super quickly, Viverse is a great place to check out. You don't have to download anything. You just type in the URL and you can click and play a game immediately. So go check that out and get some inspiration flowing. Music sound effects, and voice acting is next. For music, some great free programs that you can use are GarageBand, which is available for free on Apple devices, and Waveform, which is also free. Some good ones to look at if you want to pay for software is FL Studio and Ableton. And I personally just started learning FL Studio not too long ago. That one's really great if you're an artist or if you're very visual because you can get it to look super colorful and it's the UI is great. And there's like this little mascot you can click and drag around, which dances to the beat of your music while you're playing it, which is extremely inspiring and very motivating. And I'm relatively brand new. I have some musical background, but really the most intimidating part is learning the actual software. But once you watch your tutorials in Tutorial Land and you learn more things, it's going to be a lot easier for you. If you're somebody who can just like, <laughs> like hum a little tune, you can probably make game music. It's something that you can simply make with one instrument or two and get at least something going for you. In digital music production, it's a bit easier than learning physical instruments because there's the barrier of needing to actually buy the instrument, learn how to play that instrument and so forth. So again, could just add all these extra layers. But if you do want to learn an instrument, if you insist on learning an instrument, which is pretty cool, I'd also recommend that if you have the time and you're able, would be learning 
piano because it's very versatile and it gives you a lot of skills to kind of carry over and bring and move into other instruments as you learn them. And as for sound effects, I highly recommend something called, I think it's Fully Sound, Fully Sound. And you can record these in something called Audacity, which is a free audio program, which is very easy to use. And Fully Sound is when you make a sound with something that normally wouldn't be that sound. Like, for example, how do you get the sound of a teleporter? Well, you can get like a silver bowl, fill it with water and like shake it around and get a woo like sound and use that as your portal sound. You gotta get really creative with it. In fact, I remember learning that the dinosaur noises of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park were actually made out of a baby elephant making noises and slowing it down. Like what? If you get creative with it, you can make pretty much any sound you need with random household items. For voice acting, you can voice all the characters yourself or you could skip it entirely because it's like a whole extra set of work. Or again, you can reach out for volunteer voice actors. And if you have a budget, you can support and pay them as well. But you should really give it a try making all the voices yourself because it's literally just a chaotic gremlin energy journey. <laughs> oh, and marketing. Every developer's worst nightmare. Good luck. See you next time. Subscribe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you love getting addicted to TikTok, like I do, actually I'm more of an Instagram real girl, <laughs> just pay attention to what's trending, audios people are using, and try to utilize that and apply that to your own game when sharing the work in progress, document or etc. Start with short form content because then you can post it across multiple platforms with little extra effort like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, like you can just reuse that content. And this makes the best use of your time and is light investment in comparison to long form content. You can even do devlogs as well, which I've seen a lot of creators doing lately that has done really well. So consider that if you wanna do long form. And if you need an editing program, which I guess you probably need now if you're making videos, DaVinci Resolve is a free, great to use editing program, or again, Adobe people. <laughs> Premiere Pro is the way to go. Dang, man, this is why so many people give up with game dev, because just how many skills are we learning now? The answer is far too many. But imagine how insanely amazing the thing you work on will be when you learn all these things. Like I said, it is so worth it. So now how do you keep track of these literal billions of things I just mentioned? I really like to use Trello. I live and I breathe by Trello because it's super visual. It's free, easy to understand for an artist. There are tools out there like Notion as well and more apps so many different organizing project management tools out there. Pick one and try it. And it's really good to have if you're working on a big team to keep track of the workflow and what tasks people are supposed to be doing. Now publishing and funding, which is probably one of the hardest parts. And I know you thought all the other skills were difficult, but no. So you can publish yourself or you can reach out to a publishing company and they can help with marketing, publishing, etc. Luckily, I have literally the best solution for you, which is the Viverse Creator Program, which I mentioned earlier. So not only are we supporting marketing your product and you're also getting funding, it's the best of everything. So you can apply there, which I'll leave the link in the description and get possible funding for your game. And it's also completely free to publish your game on Viverse. You can host your game on our site, even if you didn't get into the Creator Program and just need a place to put your work. And several people are already doing this right now. This really has the potential to take so much weight off your shoulders. And to be honest, the heart of all of this comes back to community. People you can rely on to hold you accountable to your dreams and all these super big skills that you're going to be learning and growing. And you can find that community in the Viverse Discord. Subscribing to our channel and staying up to date on all the tools you need to make your visions come true is a great way to do it. Let us take a few things off of your plate so that we can help you be successful and focus on what really matters, which is actually making your game and bringing it to life. And if you want to learn even more details about the Viverse Creator Program, check out this video next.